My new workshop. This is part seven. And I've called this episode a place for everything and everything in its place. And I don't necessarily believe in that. I look at some workshops and they're incredibly tidy all the time. Mine isn't. It's usually a mess. Sort of organised chaos. What is important is that the operator, i.e. yourself, knows where everything is all of the time. My new workshop's a little bit different. I have to take into consideration the making of videos in there. And the other day I had the services of a very good professional electrician to wire me some new lights and some sockets, some on the ring main and some switch by a light pull switch, a heavy amperage light pull switch. I also changed every one of the main lights in the workshop because the old ones were very unreliable. The electrician fitted complete new units and they're much brighter than the other ones and that's a good thing. My new workshop is made of wood, so it's really important not to mount anything that makes a noise or vibrates directly onto the wood. I have this, for instance, which is my polishing spindle, mounted on a steel frame table. But it's still a little bit on the noisy side, so I thought I would shock mount it using some rubber grommets. And this is successful. Listen to it now, it's very smooth. My workshop's quite close to a neighbour's house, so I don't want to upset the neighbour whenever I start up the polishing spindle to polish the parts. I haven't gone mad, I'm feeling at the wall to see if I can feel any vibration, and no, there's no vibration being transmitted to the wall of the shed. The next thing to look at is the position of the two belt sanders and the small grinder that I have. Working from right to left, I initially had it as 4 inch belt sander, 1 inch belt sander and small grinding wheel, as you see here in fact. The problem was that when I was using the belt sander to sand a piece of soft wood which I was using to repair something in the house, the sawdust went everywhere. Here I'm vacuuming up the sawdust. Making the workshop work inside this large wooden shed is more or less complete. I just need to rearrange some things, hence this video. In the end I found this to be a good idea. The belt sander's the last one in the loop, it's on the left hand side now, with a piece of wood at the other end of it and this catches all the sawdust that the guard doesn't catch. I'm testing the principle with a piece of softwood, and as you can see, most of the volume of the sawdust ends up on the board, so it's a simple job to use a vacuum cleaner and clean it off. Some viewers have commented about the frequency of my videos, saying they're not as frequent as usual. Well, I used to do them every day, to be fair. But I really can't do that at the moment, because there's such a lot of work to do in the house. It's really difficult to spend the time making videos when I'm basically living out of cardboard boxes and carrier bags. This morning, for instance, instead of making a video, I spent the first three quarters of an hour on the phone to a company called Dreams, who sell mattresses. Unfortunately, I bought a really good quality mattress, and when it was delivered, it smelt really bad, really bad indeed. A cross between mildew and a dirty dishcloth, which is not really what you expect for £850. So I phoned them initially just to ask them if they could deliver me another one, but they said no, not for another week. So I cancelled the order, then they said they could pick it up before that. So I don't really get it, but I'm going to buy a mattress from another company. It's quite important to have most of my files and a hacksaw near the vice. I hammered some nails into the wall so I could hang the files in a convenient place. And now this really is convenient. The big hacksaw doesn't hang there, that just sits behind the vice. I've planned this workshop so it's efficient, and that way I don't have to walk around the workshop all the time looking for different things. Screwdrivers, for instance, these have always been a problem to me. I'll leave them everywhere on different benches, and it just takes time to find them, time to move myself physically over to where they are, so now they're all going to live in this piece of heavy gauge steel tubing. And there's a special area by the window where I'm going to put them, not on the bench where I work. But to get to them, all I have to do is swivel my chair around. This episode is called A Place for Everything and Everything in Its Place. And to illustrate this, I've dropped a spanner on the floor, which is bounced under the bench. And basically, I have a choice. I can get down on my hands and knees and risk getting swarf in my knees and swarf in my hands. And also, I have a bad back. So getting under the bench is a bit of a problem. So instead of potential pain, I'm going to use one of these. This is a telescopic magnet, a very useful tool to have in the workshop, but not useful if you don't know where it is. And for that reason, I've made a special area of the workshop under a shelf for magnetic tools. Things like this telescopic magnet, also magnetic lights and things like that. 
and I've put this metal plate underneath one of the shelves where I hang my Action Man deserter, and that way I always know where they are when I want them, provided I put them back after I've used them. And the next topic is where to keep my pens. I lose pens and pencils all of the time, so I'm going to keep them in this metal box along with the surgical forceps, which is right on top of the tower that rotates. One of these plastic boxes that I get from Chris English at CME Engineering when I buy steam fittings is where I'm going to temporarily keep all my pairs of pliers. Sockets and sizes that I use regularly lives in this toolbox that is also on top of the rotating part. Why am I doing this? Why am I not making lots of videos? Well, I'm sorry about this, but I have to finish the house. In the studio part of the house, I've made a special vocal booth, so I had to assemble the furniture to hold the Apple Mac computer, which is what I use to edit and voice over the videos. And today, oh deep joy, I'm going to assemble a wardrobe. Yet another flat pack, it's driving me mad. But as soon as I get my head clear and get my house finished so I can actually live again, the video should be better than ever, the film quality is definitely better. So thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.